Welcome back. Today we're going to start chapter one, lesson three, graphs of equivalent ratios. As you can see on the screen here, it says that what the goal is, the goal is students will use graphs to represent ratio values. And we're going to have some new vocab terms to go with it, and I mean a bunch of them. You can see you've got coordinate plane, ordered pair, hello Sheru, origin, x-axis, the x-coordinate, the y-axis, and the y-coordinate. Make sure you're copying those down in your notes so that you will have them to refer back to to help you study for your vocabulary test. Of course, those are also always linked at the very top of each, sec each module in Canvas. With that said, let's go ahead and get started on our presentation. Take a minute, do your warm-up activity, pause the recording while you do this, and we will go over the warm-up activity in a minute. Okay, everybody's hopefully done now. Let's take a look at the answers to our questions and our warm-up activity. Jameer's closet. In Jameer's closet, two out of three pieces of clothing are t-shirts. Write the ratio of t-shirts to pieces of clothing in three different ways. So, you could do that three different ways using the word 2 to 9. You could use a colon 2 colon 9 and you could use a fraction 2 over 9. So here you've written it three different ways. Next problem says Mia wrote the ratio 3 to 5 to express the ratio of horses to pigs on the farm. Explain the meaning of the ratio. And it says in your answer key that the ratio 3 to 5 means that for every three horses on the farm, there were five pigs. Notice that answer for number 2 is in sentence form. That's what I would expect to see on your paper when you answer it, is answering in complete sentences. Problem number 3. There are three apples and four pears in a fruit basket. Nicholas wrote the ratio of apples to pears as 3 to 4. Logan wrote the ratio as 3 colon 4. Who is correct? Explain your answer. And they have in sentence form that both students are correct, that the answer could be written as both 3 to 4 or 3 colon 4. It could also have been written as 3 over 4. All of those are very good answers. Moving to our next resource. Maybe. There we go. Ratios is ordered pairs. You previously learned how to create a ratio table and extend it by finding equivalent ratios. You can also represent a ratio relationship by creating a table of ordered pairs and graphing the ordered pairs on the coordinate plane. Now, if we were to take and go back to our definition, I do believe that we have ordered pairs. Whoop, that's not the one we want. I do believe, I don't know where we need to be, that we had ordered pairs as one of our definitions. That would be right here. An ordered pair is a pair of numbers used to locate a point on a coordinate plane. And I'm going to put Sheru down and I'm going to add a little bit to that and say that they are written as parentheses x Oops, wrong parentheses, parentheses, x, comma, space, y, close parentheses. That is how you write an ordered pair in the proper format. Now you can see that here, they instead chose to write their ordered pairs in the using a table here, where the x column is right here, your y column is right here. That's the same thing as saying parentheses, x, comma, space, Okay, sorry, parentheses, one, comma, space, three, close parentheses, parentheses, two, comma, space, six, close parentheses, and so on. Continuing with the lesson, it says to make a simple salad dressing, you can use three cups of olive oil for every cup of vinegar. That's, by the way, known as an oil and vinegar dressing. You can then add herbs, salt, and or pepper for the seasoning. This relationship is shown in the table. Each pair 
of equivalent ratios can be expressed as an ordered pair. The x coordinate represents the number of cups of vinegar. The y coordinate represents the number of cups of olive oil. Next slide. Recall that to graph an, a point, <clears throat> excuse me, recall that to graph a point, you start at the origin and you move right along the x-axis and the, to the number of units indicated in the x-coordinate and then from that location you move up or down along the y-axis the number of units indicated in the y-coordinate and then place a dot on the, that location. The, and it wants us to here graph ordered pairs to show the ratio relationships the graph illustrates the ratio of relationship to the cups of vinegar to the number of cups of olive oil in salad dressing. You might notice that the travel from each point to the next point, you move up three units and to the right one unit. These are the same ratios as the ratio of the cups of olive oil to the cups of vinegar. So let's take a look at how we're going to do this. Our first one is my x is 1, my y is 3. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to select it and I'm going to drag it to where I've started at zero. I went right one and up three. I'm going to go, my next point is point two six. I'm going to add another point here. I'm going to start at my x coordinate or my origin. I'm going to go right two and up six. My next point is going to be three nine. I'm going to grab a point. I'm going to start at my origin. I'm going to go right 3 and up 9. My next coordinate is 412. So I'm going to grab another point. Start at my origin. I'm going to go right 4 and up 12. And then my last point is 515. So I'm going to grab one more point. And once again, I'm going to start at my origin. I'm going to go right 5 and up 15. And here you have got a graph, and as it said right here, that um, for every, <clears throat> that you move three units up to every one unit right. And that's what we've got going here. We move three units up for every one unit right. Three units up, one unit right. Three units up, one unit right. And so on. Pretty cool how that works. This, by the way, is called a linear um, graph because if you were to take and connect these dots you would make a line from them. Now we want to take and check that answer so we can check it right here and we got our check mark at the top it is correct we created our graph properly. Move to the next slide talk about it compare and contrast the ratio table and the graph. How do they both illustrate the same relationship? How does the graph help to visualize the ratio relationship? Well, they both give you the same relationship because for each step along the way, your x value increases by 1 and your y value increases by 3. I really like the graph because the graph, you totally see it. You can see, visualize the exact comparison of the com ingredients and you can connect all those dots with a line. And any point along that line is going to give you the same exact ratio between the vinegar and your olive oil. Moving to our next resource. Tamara is making charm bracelets for several friends. She uses six beads for every charm. Generate the set of ordered pairs for the ratio relationship between the number of beads Y and the number of charms X for a total of one, two, three, and four charms. Then graph the relationship. And our think about it says, what is a ratio of charms to beads? Hmm. Well, let's go back and look at it. She uses, right there's our ratio. I'm going to highlight that. Six beads for every charm. So the ratio of charms to beads, that's going to be backwards. Charms to beads 
is going to end up being one charm to every six beads. Meanwhile, beads to charms is going to be what you see up here where it is six beads to every charm. In the end, it's the same exact thing. One bead to six charms or six charms to one bead, it's the same thing. You're just writing them backwards from each other. Create a table of ordered pairs. So we're going to let X represent the number of charms and we're going to let Y represent the um, number of beads. And I'm going to go ahead and make a screenshot of this because I want us to do some supporting work on this problem. So we're going to take and hit my control print screen. Maybe. Nope, that didn't work. So let's go to this app right here. And we're going to take and make a screenshot of that. We're going to copy that, hopefully. And we're going to put it on our drawing board. And hey, it worked that time. Excellent. So from here, pause it. All right, now we're ready to go. So to do this, we need to ask ourselves, when I was going from 1 to 2, well, let me get my pen tool back here. When I went from 1 to 2, what did I do? I multiplied by 2. So here, I'm going to do the same thing times 2. 6 times 2 is going to give me 12. Next I'm going to go 1 to 3 was 8 times 3. So 6 times 3 is going to give us 18. And then finally 1 to 4 is going to be times 4. Therefore 6 times 4 is going to be 24. This is good supporting work. So on your homework, if you're doing this problem, you're going to need to copy down this chart and show me how you came up with the numbers that you're filling this chart out with. That's just to find where the numbers are coming from. So now I've got the numbers that I need to put in my box. So I'm going to go here. I've got 12. I've got 18. And I've got 24. And we're going to take and check that answer and that part checked. Good. So now I'm going to take and write this as ordered pair. They already did the ordered pair 1 to 6 right here. You got 1 to 6, 1 to 6. So my next ordered pair is going to be 2 to 12. So I have a 2 to 12. Notice you have parentheses in that. You have your number, a comma, and the big thing that people miss is that space after the comma. If you're typing into the computer and you don't put a space in between the comma and the 12, it's going to be marked wrong. Our 3 to 18 is going to be the next one, and our 4 to 24 is going to be the next one. And we're going to check those answers, and those answers checked perfectly too. Moving on to our next slide. All right, the next thing we're going to do is graph those ordered pairs. So we're going to take and throw down a dot. I'm going to see if I can make this a little bit smaller so we can see better. There we go. My first ordered pair is 1 to 6. So you're going to start at your origin. You're going to run 1, and you're going to rise 6. Your next ordered pair is going to be 2, 12. So we're going to add another dot. We're going to start at our origin. We're going to run 2 and rise 12, which can put us there. Our next ordered pair is 3 to 18. So we're going to run 3 and rise to 18 right there. And our last ordered pair is 424. So we're going to run 4 and rise 24 right there. Check our answer. Our answer checks. Excellent. Moving to our next slide. What do you notice about the points on the graph? Hmm, think about it for a minute. Write down on a sheet of paper for me what you notice about the points on a graph. Pause the recording while you do it. All right, what do you notice? Well, you should notice the points on the graph make a straight line, making it a linear equation and a linear graph. And let's see if this check works. It looks like it's going to work. Y'all pause the recording and do this check on your own. You start off 
by clicking on Start Assignment down here in your bottom left. So here we go, let's start the assignment. A survey of randomly selected students found that out of every 10 students, three said that they get their news from their cell phone. So I'm going to go over to my scratch paper so I have places to work because if you're not showing your work, you are going to, of course, lose lots and lots of points. So I can say that out of every three students, We have, I believe it said, my computer's lagging on me here, hold on. I totally wrote that wrong, so we're going to delete that and we're going to start again. And we're going to say that for every 10 students, 10 students, 3 get their news from the cell phone. If my guess is right, the other seven just don't get any news at all. So there's my ratio. You can, of course, write it using the word two or write it using a colon as well. From here, we're going to say, she, say if there are 750 students at Heritage Middle School, how many students can be expected to get their news from a cell phone? Now, lots of different ways you can do that, but my goal is going to be to get my total number of students to equal to 750. So, easy way to do this, ask yourself 10 times what number is going to equal to 750. That number is of course going to be 75. If you do it on the top, you have to do it on the bottom. And 3 times 75 is going to be 225 students get their news from the cell phone. So with that, we can come over here, type in our 225, click Done and Review, and submit the assignment. And when you submit that assignment, it actually gets turned in to where it can be possibly graded. So do your best on it. I'm going to clear that out. Now I'm going to start breaking these assignments down into more bite-sized pieces. So we're going to stop this recording here. And then we will start with part two of, the, of graphing ratio relationships on the next video. See you soon. Uh -huh.